What is going on everybody, my name is Roddy and today we're going to explore the Wind CSS. I'm going to super quickly PowerPoint you and then we'll get started. So in short, Tailwind CSS is a utility for CSS framework packed with easy to use predefined classes. Some of the benefits include not needing to spend time coming up with logical class names, it uses the approach of use what you need and it's easy to customize. The negatives are messy looking markup, you have to learn another syntax and it's up to you to follow the accessibility best practices when adding interactive behavior. And last but not least, I wanted to mention a few useful resources, starting with the official documentation, obviously, Tailwind Play, which is essentially a playground where you can mess around with Tailwind. We have hero icons, which were designed by the Tailwind CSS, and we have Tail Blocks, which is free resource for ready to use Tailwind CSS blocks. That's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Tailwind TSS. And now let's jump on the computer and get started. Hey, welcome everybody, and let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is create a new project folder, and I'm going to call this one Tailwind CSS. Inside this folder is where we're going to be adding our project files. I'm going to open this folder with Visual Studio Code super quickly. Here is Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go to File, Open, and select the Tailwind CSS folder that we just created. To get started, let's go to tailwindcss.com and click Get Started. So today I'm going to be using the Tailwind CLI, but you can also use the Post CSS. You can choose a framework or you can play with the CDN. As we're using the Tailwind CLI, you will need to have Node.js installed on your machine. And if you don't, you can just navigate to nodejs.org, download Node.js for your operating system and follow the installation instructions. Now let's start by installing Tailwind CSS. The first thing that we need to do is install Tailwind CSS via NPM. To do this, we can use the following command here. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna open Visual Studio Code go into the terminal and click new terminal. You can also do this with your command line or PowerShell, whatever you wish. As long as you CD to this folder, you should be good to go. So I'm going to right click to paste the code in here, which is npm install minus d Tailwind CSS, which means that this is going to install Tailwind globally. The next thing that we need to do is npx Tailwind init. And this is basically going to create this Tailwind.config file for us. So let's do that, paste in here and press enter, job done. The next step that we need to do is actually configure our template paths. These are gonna be where our HTML and JS documents are stored. So it's pretty much up to you how you want to structure your project. But for this example, I'm gonna use exactly the same file structure in here, just so we're on the same page. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna open the tailwind config.js. Let's remove this a little bit like so, and I'm going to replace the content. So this means that I'm going to have to create this source folder and inside this source folder, I'm going to have my HTML and JavaScript files, and I'm going to show you how this works in a second. So let's go back and have a look. What else do we need to do? Step number three is adding the directive to our CSS. So we need to create a source folder and inside this source folder, we're going to have to create an input.css file and add the Tailwind directives for each layer, such as base, components, and utilities. So let's copy this, go to our project folder here, create a new folder, source like so, and then inside here, I'm gonna create an input.css like so, and paste the code that we just copied. Save this, close it as we won't need it for now, and let's have a look at the next step. So the next step is to actually start the CLI build process. And I'm going to explain this. So let me copy this first of all, and let's paste it in the terminal. So inside here, we have MPX Tailwind TSS, and we are basically looking for changes. Every time we make a change on our HTML file, which we're gonna create in a second, we want to basically take the input CSS file from here and and build it into a folder called dist with a file called output.css. This is the file that we will need to include in our HTML as well. So this is gonna be this is gonna be kind of like the process file. And the last thing that we have is watch me, which means that we want this to keep watching for changes. If you're familiar with SCSS, it's pretty much the same thing. 
So if I press enter, this should give us a warning. And the reason for this is because we actually haven't got any classes to, you know, HTML document. And that's because we don't actually have an HTML document. But what's happening here is that Delwin has taken the input CSS and it's compiled or output inside here. As you can see, let me just move that to the bottom. As you can see, we have some basic Tailwind styles in here, which is great. So let's close this. And by the way, this is going to be uh, running from now on. So let's close this. Let's go back to the installation guide. And the last thing that we need to do is create our index.html page inside the source folder. So I'm going to copy this example just to speed up the process and explain everything. Let's copy this. Let's go back and inside the source folder, let's create a new file called index.html like so, and let's paste the HTML. As you can see, the Delwind CSS automatically started a rebuild process because there was a change in the document. As you can, every time I save, it's just going to rebuild it, which is great. Let me first of all explain the HTML and I will show you what's happening. So we have a very basic HTML in here and we have a link to the output.css, which is in this this folder. We also have an h1 tag inside here, which has three classes, text, free XL, font bold and underline. So technically speaking, uh, we should be able to run this project and view in our browser. And for this, I'm going to be using an extension. So if you go to extensions, the extension is called a live server. You can install it basically kind of like saves you time. So you don't have to refresh uh, the page every time you make a change. So I'm going to be using this to start a local server. Let me just go to Explorer and I'm just going to click go live. This is going to open the browser somewhere. Here we go. And as you can see, we have hello world. And if I was to inspect the page, you will see that we have some basic Tailwind classes in here, which is great. All right, let me close this. Let me zoom in and let's go back and let me explain a few other things. As I said, every time we refresh the CSS is being rebuilt. And one thing that I wanted to show you is that the Tailwind CSS only adds the classes that we're using. So if you know those three classes, the underline form both and the text free Excel, and if we go to the dist output.css, scroll right to the bottom, you'll see that we have those three classes in here. So these are only added because we have them in our HTML file. Let's close this. Okay, before we begin writing HTML and CSS, I just wanted to show you a super useful extension that you can install, which is called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Yeah, you can go to extensions and install this, and I'll show you why this is super helpful to have. So if I close this super quickly, and if I go back to my project, and if I hover over on any of the Tailwind classes, it actually tells me what this class does. Obviously, underline is very, uh, descriptive. So this one adds text decoration line underline, font bold adds font weight of 700, and text free Excel adds a font size and a line height. So this is super useful. Uh, it also shows colors and so on. Speaking of colors, let's have a look at how we can use them. So if we go back to the Tailwind documentation, and if you want to do a quick search, you can do Control and K. So what I'm going to do is scroll down and I'm going to show you under customize, click on colors and inside here, you will be able to see the full library of colors that Tailwind TSS comes with. So there is a lot of choice in here. And if you want to use any of those colors, you can pretty much choose the name. So for example, let's say blue and you can choose the number. So let me show you if I wanted to make the background of our page blue, I can do, I can give this body a class name of BG as a background and then dash blue and then dash the number of the blue that I want. So I think I wanted like something like 700. And as you can see, the extension is already working for me. It shows that this is a blue color. And if the build rebuild process is successful, we can go back and you will see that the page that we have is blue. Obviously I've zoomed in quite a lot. That's why the font is so massive, but that's how we can use the colors. So for example, let's say I wanted to change the text to be that CN50. So what I can do is I can do text dash CN and then I can choose 50. And as you can see, the extension is already working for me here and it's giving me a lot of options. 
and I can just choose from this. So I'm going to put CM50, save this. And if I go back, you will see that the color has changed. And you can pretty much do this with anything, for example, border colors, anything that you can think of that you can put color on, uh, you can do that. Obviously, you will have to go through the documentation as you work on your project and find the things that you need. I'm not going to be able to cover absolutely everything, but that's how you use the colors. Now, in most cases, you probably already have branding colors in mind. All right, if you go to colors and scroll down quite a bit, there is a lot of examples, but this is one of them. So if you want to use custom colors, this will completely replace the ones that come with uh, Tailwind CSS. And that's absolutely fine if you have your own branding. So I'm going to use this as an example and also make sure that you put your transparent uh, color in here and current color because that could become useful as you are developing your website. So I'm going to grab the whole thing here just to save us some time and paste this inside the Tailwind config.js. And this goes under theme here. So I'm going to list it like that close this and let me explain what's happening here. Inside here, you can pretty much name your colors, whatever you like, and you can add a limited amount of numbers and basically give them an, a hex code. So technically speaking, if I save this, my colors will no longer work from Tailwind CSS and I can only use those colors in here. I can name them whatever I like and I can give them whatever um, value I like. Let's say, for example, I want to give my background color of purple. So I can use this name and I can just go background purple like so and that should work here we go and let's say i wanted to change the text to something else like the silver i can just grab this and i can replace it here text silver that's it here we go that's it the text is now silver which is perfect obviously there is a lot more that you can do with colors but this is the basics of it the next thing that i wanted to show you is the font configuration so if we go to theme and scroll down, as you can see here, we can add a custom font. To do this, I'm going to grab this super quickly, go back to our Tailwind config file and just add it in here. Obviously, I don't want this font, so I'm going to change it slightly. Let's go to Google Fonts super quickly. OK, and the font that I want is called Outfit. So I'm going to click on this font here, select the weights that you want. So for example, I can choose regular. Let's do that. And I can choose bold from here. Let's do that. And if you go here to view your selected families, you will see the selected families that we have. And let me zoom in a little bit. And then I can grab the link from here and put that in my HTML first of all. So here it is underneath here, underneath my CSS. Let's indent this a little bit like so, save it. And also I need to grab the name of this. And this is sans serif. So I'm going to grab the name of the font family and replace it here. And sans serif is the default. So that's going to stay the way it is. So this is the first font. Obviously, you can add more if you wish with a comma and that's it. So technically speaking, if I save this and if I save the index.html page, the font should change. Here it is. The new font has changed. I can see the difference. Maybe I should have used a totally different one. The next thing that I wanted to show you is the breakpoints. And then we're going to build some responsive examples super quickly. So for example, if you go here under core concepts and responsive web design. Basically, if you want to build adaptive user interfaces, you can use the following breakpoints, which come with Tailwind CSS, but you can also modify them. I'm not going to modify them now, but I'm going to show you how to use the default ones. So we have small, medium screen, large screen, Excel, and double XL. And these are the minimum widths for each breakpoint. So you can pretty much pair them with whatever you like. Here is an example of an image. So on mobile, the width is 16. On middle screens, the width is 32. And on large, the width of this image will be 48. Let's do the same thing with the H1 that we have. So what I'm going to do here is on smaller screens, this is going to be the default value, text free Excel. Then on middle screens, I want this to be text, for example, 6 Excel. And on large screens, I want this to be text maybe 9XL like so, and save. So if this has worked, let me go back. I think I need to zoom out a little bit for this example to work. Okay, so this is a big screen, so the font is quite big. But if I scale down my browser super quickly, look what happens. The responsive 
uh, breakpoints are kicking in. So small, medium, large. So this is how you can use the responsive breakpoint and you can use them on pretty much anything. As you saw here, the example with the image, you can use them on everything. The beautiful thing is that you can use them with pretty much everything that makes sense to use breakpoints. One thing that I wanted to show you is that nothing in Tailwind CSS is actually styled as the food. What I mean by this is, for example, H1, let's do a couple of headings. So heading one, and I'm gonna do heading two, three, four, five. Let me just change this super quickly. So we have five headings, one, two, three, four, five. And if we go to the website, you will see they will look the same. So obviously I'm zoomed in quite a lot now, but as you can see, they will look the same. So what that means is you need to style pretty much every single element manually. This can be a good thing, but also it, it could result in duplicate uh, classes. And that's why it's probably best to use Tailwind with kind of like a component based framework, such as Angular, React, Svelte, Vue, and so on. So saying this, we can definitely style them the way we want, just like we have in here. So maybe I can do text, let's say class text nine Excel. And maybe for the second one, I can do a class of text six Excel and so on. So let me zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, they're now styled. Of course, I can give them a text color as well, just like so. And I can make them responsive with the responsive breakpoint. So this is how this works. And now let's build a super simple header just to show you how you can do responsive web design with Flexbox. So I'm gonna remove all this and I'm gonna make the rest in here. So let's build a super simple header and my header, and I want my header to be full width. This means that I'm not gonna use the container from Tailwind, but we'll get to the container in a second. So let's start a header. So I'm going to use HTML5 and start a header in here. And for this header, all I want is a logo. So I'm going to give it a link, href with slash, because this is our homepage. And then I'm going to have a few classes here. And this is going to be my logo. All right, let's create a very simple menu. And you can do this however you like. I'm just going to build it with a simple URL. And inside here, I'm going to create a list with some links. So inside the list, obviously I'm going to have a link and this link is going to go, it's just going to be blank to be honest. And I'm going to be adding a few classes to the links. And let's say we have home and let's duplicate this super quickly. So let me put in one line and let's duplicate this two more times. And we're going to have, we're going to have about, and we're going to have contact. Okay. Save this and let's have a look at how this looks. So at the moment we have, and probably it's probably best to remove the hello world as well. Let me just remove it. And I am zoomed in quite a lot, but at the moment we have logo and we have all links. So I want the logo to be on the left side and I want the, the menu items to be on the right side. And when we scale down to mobile, I want to turn this into a mobile toggle. I'm not going to write the JavaScript but I just want to show you how the responsive design works. To do this, we can use Flexbox. So what I'm going to do on the header, I'm going to give it a class of flex and I'm just going to do justify between. Save this and as you can see, the logo is now on the left side and we have the navigation on the right side, which is great. The text doesn't look great, so I can do text white. Maybe we can give it a little bit of padding on the Y axis, so something like four and padding on the X axis of, let's say, eight and then that could be that could look okay let's have a look as you can see this is getting better now for the logo maybe we want to make this a little bit bolder so what we can do is use text large dash large and then maybe i can do it with font bold like so save this as you can see the logo is now bolder and if you want to style the links what we can do is also convert this into flex so i can do class flex and we can do flex a row and this will hopefully put every single item on the same row as you can see but we have a little bit of an issue here where there is no space between them and to fix this we can use gap so with the gap we can just do gap and choose a number nothing specific here maybe we can go gap four did it save gap four and as you can see this leaves a little bit of a gap and that's looking good. The next thing that I'm spotting is that the logo and the items here are not aligned. So what we might have to do is give this 
a flex item center so items center like so and maybe we can also align them in the middle like so and save let's have a look at how this works think yeah i think that's now in the middle they look in the middle now which is great a little bit small but that's not a problem okay that's already looking good but let's have a look at how we can start the buttons for example so if we go to home i can give it a background of bubblegum which comes from our tailwind config and if i save this you will see that this gives it a background of bubblegum now accessibility is not great here obviously i might have to change this to a darker color so i can maybe do text color to be midnight i'm not sure how this is gonna look and also the padding wasn't great so maybe we can do padding y of two and padding x to be something like four let's have a look at how this looks that's already looking good and one more thing i wanted to do is maybe we can give it a nice rounded edges and to do this we can do rounded and maybe rounded md which is kind of like a bigger rounded radius as you can see save this and let's have a look did i save here we go we have run the corners now which is great so the next thing that i want to do is when we shrink down the browser so if inspector put the responsive mode on here and if I shrink down the browser i want the menu this menu to disappear and i want to put a burger menu so to do this we can actually we can hide this on small screen so because we are mobile start with mobile first what i can do is just put hidden and then the flex here i can do md flex so what this is saying is that on mobile this is going to be hidden but on middle screen it's going to be flex so let's have a look as you can see mobile it's hidden and middle screen it's coming up so in the same way i can add an icon here with the hamburger menu so let's create that what i'm going to do is just a button for now so let's do a button and this button is going to be an svg so so Tailwind CSS has its own library that they've developed, they've designed, which is called Hero Icons. Okay, if you go to um, Tailwind CSS slash resources, and if you scroll down, you will see these Hero Icons. They look amazing. So if we click on them, learn more, we can actually grab any of the SVGs here. And I'm going to look for menu. And the one that I want to use is maybe this one here. So I can copy the SVG and I can put this SVG inside the button. Let's save this and let's have a look what we get. So this icon is white, so that's why it's showing. I'm not able to zoom in here. Uh, maybe I can zoom in like so, so you can see a little bit. Okay, as you can see, this icon is white and is added in here, but it's also not disappearing. So what I want to do on, when we go to medium screens, I want the icon to disappear. To do this, we add a class to the button. So class, and just like here, we can do exactly the same thing, but the opposite. So on middle screens, we want to just hide this. So hidden, middle screen is hidden. Save this, and to be fair, that's pretty much it. So if I go back, and if I open the browser like so, you will see that the uh, menu disappeared, and this one appeared. And this is how you make the responsive layouts happen. So let me show you one last example. In the next example, I'm going to show you how to use the container and I'm going to show you how to use grid. Okay, we had our header full width in here, but what about if you want to containerize your website? Well, you can use the container class name. So let's do container like so and put something inside here. Container like so and save it. So this is going to containerize our layout. And if I put maybe border two, just so you can see how this is behaving, you will see that it's full width of mobile, but when we go up, it you can see the breakpoints in here. And at the moment, it's not in the middle. And the reason for this is because we need to do that as well. So there are two ways of doing that. You can either do it with the MX Auto, which is basically margin zero auto. So if I was to put MX Auto, this should center aligning for us. And the other way of center aligning the container is to actually go to the config and you can go down here under maybe from family and add container. And then you can put center to true. And then maybe we can even give it a padding if you wish to your left and right. So let's say padding of two rem like so. Let's save this and I think I broke my that went CSS, so I'm gonna have to restart super quickly. And it's because I missed the comma. 
save, restart super quickly, and we should be good to go. And now if I was to remove the MX Auto, save this, the container should be still in the middle and it should have uh, a padding of two rooms on the left and the right side of it. So this is how the container works. Obviously you can modify it to work however you like with the uh, responsive variant, but as a default, this is how it behaves using those breakpoints. The next example I wanna show you is using grid. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to use this container. I'm gonna remove the border for now and I'm gonna create a few cards. So what I'm gonna do is wrap all of those cards in a grid element. Okay, let's create a div element with the class name of grid. So grid and maybe we can add grid calls to be two to start with and then we'll modify. So let's start by adding two very basic cards. So I can do maybe uh, let's create a div with background of white and maybe rounded MX, MD, sorry, which is rounded corners, a little bit more rounded corners in this case. And then we can have dot padding, padding to the X axis of dash four. And then we can have padding of the Y axis with four or something like that. And then maybe we can have a little bit of a border just so you can see what's going on and we can change the border color to border midnight boom just like that let's add an h2 in here just to make it look a little bit pretty so it makes sense and let's say category category and for this h2 let's add a couple of classes as well so this can be tracking why this text we can set to x excess and then we can do margin bottom of one let's create an h1 as well and then this is gonna have a class name of title font text large text gray do we have gray text text silver and margin bottom of three then we can give it a heading of tailwind css and let's create a paragraph in here paragraph with the class of leading which changes the text line height, as you can see. Let's put this as text small and margin bottom of three. And for this, I'm just gonna put some lower Ipsum text, go to view, well wrap, just so we can see. And last but not least, let's create a button. This button is gonna have a class name of background midnight, text small, and then text dash white and then round it md just so we can stay consistent Pad into the xy axis four Pad into the y one and and save so this is gonna be click me and now we can duplicate this card super quickly and let's have a look at what we get so we have the grid the grid the grid is set to two columns and we have two cards so if you go back, you will see that we have the two cards in here. The text is a little bit hard to read, so maybe I need to change that. And I need to have a little bit of a gap. So let me do that. So gap, we can do gap of four. We can use maybe text midnight for the headings. And let's put that one in here as well. And let's have a look at how this looks. Oh, and one thing that I noticed, one thing that uh, is really good about the extension that we're using is that it tells you if you have duplicate uh, class names. So obviously this is, I have, I've put the text to be silver and then I've put the text to be text midnight, which is not good. So I need to remove the silver from here, which is awesome. And I need to remove it from here. So I'm kind of glad that this happened. And now let's save. And as you can see, we have two cuts. Now let me show you what happens if we add a few more cuts. So I'm going to copy those cut and paste them like so. And let's have a look at what happens. So first of all, if we go down, we only have two cards on every single breakpoint. But what if we wanted to change this? What if we wanted to have four cards in one row on large screens and maybe two on medium and so on? So for example, on our grid, we can do grid calls one for mobile. And then for medium screens, maybe we can do grid calls Two. Let's say for large screens, we can do grid calls four. Let's save this and let's see what happens. So on large screens, we have four columns, which is awesome. And if we go down a little bit, like so, we have two. And if you go even further to mobile, we have one. And this is how you can use 
responsive breakpoint with grid. It's super easy to do. It takes a couple of seconds. And the last thing that I want to show you is how you can actually create your own classes by extending the by extending the tailwind ones. So for example, let's pick this button here. So I can say custom button. Now I can use this class name. Let's go to the CSS, the input.css. And inside here I can put custom button and I can extend the Tailwind CSS classes inside here. So I can actually use them by doing at apply. And then I can say maybe I want the background to be purple for the buttons like so. And maybe I want for the buttons to have a shadow. So apply and shadow MD, which is kind of like a bigger shadow. So let me save this and let's see what happens. So if we go back to the website, as you can see, the color has changed and we have a little bit of a shadow. So this is how you can kind of like extend, make your own classes using the classes predefined from Tailwind. And if I wanted to do a hover for this, maybe I can just do custom button and I can just do hover. And I'm not sure what color to use for this. Maybe, I don't know, bubblegum. I think that would do. So maybe you can just apply bubblegum and maybe we can remove the shadow from so let's have a look did i save yep let's go back okay i applied bubble gum but i didn't put it as a background so bg dash bubble gum and shadow md okay that's it let's save and as you can see now we have a hover over and now i can apply this class pretty much to anything and that's pretty much everything. All right, this is gonna be everything from this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. It's kind of hard to cover absolutely everything, but this should get you started. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something new. Consider subscribing to my channel and give me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching.